stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our debonair ideal segment for this evening. Very happy to be here. I'm very excited about our topic uh, as it uh, kind of uh, is a play off of some things that Jose Blanco was talking about in a recent blending seminar I attended and uh, I think we'll uh, talk about cigar pairings tonight, and, but talk about the rules. And a lot of people, I don't know, Will, the decision seems to be split. Some people think there are rules. Other people think there aren't any rules. Uh, I, I do think rules apply, uh, but certainly you should take a lot of uh, freedoms in the pairings that you so choose. Oh, I, I'm completely in uh, step with you on that. You know, I used to believe that you should never pair like with an IPA. And I was like, oh, I can't believe that guy's over there. He's smoking a cigar and drinking an IPA, and it's just, it's just a horrible pairing. And then over time, I think I've learned to uh, understand that people are going to pair with what they like. And that for the most part, Will, there's nothing wrong with that. No, there isn't. And I remember when we... You know, when we were pairing those CAO cigars with the IPAs, yes, we we were a little skeptical on that, and we gave it a shot. And I think, I mean, I think you actually would want to pair it with the IPA. I think you were actually pretty surprised by that. I was, I was, and that was one of the experiences that really opened up my mind to being a lot more lenient on people when they try and pair things that I wouldn't necessarily pair, and not kind of like looking down upon them for that. I think that. Over time, my view on that has matured so much so that I'm like, you know what? Pair with whatever you want. If you like to drink coffee, beer, any kind of spirit cocktail, give it a shot. And understand that, you know, one of the things Jose was saying is, you know, maybe you like to pair with a, you know, a 16-year-old or 18-year-old scotch and someone else likes to pair with a bourbon. And if I go over someone else's house and I try and pair with a bourbon, maybe I don't like it. And that's okay. Not every pairing is made for everyone. Um, some of the other things I, I wanted to mention, Will, that I thought was important as I started thinking about this and thinking about some of the things that Jose has, and other people have brought up in their blending seminars is it, it's all about your ability to taste. And I think you have to keep those components in mind when you think about what you're going to pair with a cigar. So... Some people will say there's four components to taste. Other people will say that there's five. Um, but the basic, the four, I, and I can see why people stick with four, um, are sour, bitter, sweet, and salty. And a lot of other people add savory in there, which is, yep. uh, uh, it's called umami. It's derived from a Japanese term. I don't know if I'm saying that, that right. Uh, it's basically translated as pleasant, savory taste. And... Um, so I think that when you pair, you want to have balance. Just as you want to have balance in a cigar and balance in a drink, you want to have balance together. So I think my advice for pairing, and the, certainly the pairings that I've had that work really well, have that combination in sour, bitter, sweet, salty, savory, but nothing in one category that jumps up too high on the scale. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you've got a cigar that's got a little bit of bitterness component to it, um, you know, maybe some Connecticut wrappers can have a bitterness uh, taste to them, which is just a, a function of the wrapper is what Jose was, was saying. Uh, you don't want to pair that with, you know, a very bitter IPA because your, your balance is going to be off on your pairing. Um, that's not to say you c and it's nice because when you think about cooking, right, you want to pair sweet and salty together as well. So I think if you try and, you know, kind of balance those things together, you'll have a, a better experience pairing, maybe. I don't know. I agree. I think my rule is I don't force the pairing. 
Mm. So it, I think you, it's worth it to try it. Like just like you're putting ingredients in a recipe together, I think you could try it. It isn't always going to work. Right. Well, um, it's like when I did the blending seminar with Mike Harklotz from Nat Sherman. He said, you know, gave us two. Uh, t- said take two of these paritos and smoke them together at the same time. You're like, wow, that is absolutely terrible. And then you add another component or two, another perito or two, and smoke the blend together. And you're like, wow, that actually all works. So uh, there's definitely something to a little bit of the science behind it and a little bit of the art behind pairing. So what I try and tell people is don't try to pair bold cigars or try to pair bold cigars with bold drinks. That might work. They might be able to complement each other. Um, You can pair bold cigars, I think, with mild drinks. I think that the way a a drink in a liquid hits your palate is different from smoke. And if I've been smoking a bold cigar, I find that, like, my cigar won't overpower my drink. My drink will almost always overpower my cigar. If I'm choosing a mild cigar to pair with a bold drink, that almost always ends up poorly. I mean, the drink might taste great and the cigar might taste great, but you're just not going to taste the cigar because the drink is attacking your palate too much. Um, so that, those are kind of my, my tips, Will. Yeah, and you know when you get into reviewing, it, it that's where it, it could really muddy the waters because yes, a Cuban coffee can go really good with a cigar. I love a Cuban coffee, yeah. but it's gonna it's gonna like you said that sweetness and that Cuban coffee is gonna overpower it. So then I kind of quite if you're reviewing a cigar with a Cuban coffee, I kind of question that. Now if you're reviewing the pairing, right, I think that's there's different. nothing wrong with that because then you're trying to you're you're reviewing that that particular experience. But if you're trying to review the cigar, you know, a Cuban coffee, a Dr Pepper just isn't going to work with it. Yeah, I think um, coffee goes well with pretty much all cigars. I think it's yeah, a, it's a good universal pairing. But if black, you like coffee, black, black coffee. I mean, but black, black coffee. coffee. If you've got something like a latte, as much as I love lattes. I've never had a good experience pairing a latte with a cigar. Just yeah. haven't had, it just doesn't, for whatever reason, it, it doesn't work for me. And I've tried different lattes from not just Starbucks, which likes to burn their coffee, but other places as well. Yeah. And it just, it doesn't work out for me. Um, I do want to mention that some of the things where the rules come in, I tend to recommend that people never pair a cigar with something acidic, like orange juice. Or acidic drinks like grapefruit juice, grape, or something like a sour drink. Like, you know, have those Italian uh, arrancata sodas yep. they have. It, it never works. That acidic, just it, whatever it does to your palate, makes your cigar taste really weird, in my opinion. So I never pair anything in that category with a cigar, is my advice. Oh, I would agree. And I think it's kind of, again, going back to the, the an oversweet drink, I think it's the same thing. So, yeah, I mean... I have, I have actually reset my palate sometimes by having an orange juice, but even after that, you can't like smoke right away. No, but it will reset, some time. It will reset the palate. But I know Jose uses tonic water. Yes. Um, yeah, at his. Yeah, and, and I it, keep some with me usually, actually right here when we're doing the show, I keep some tonic water. That's good for cleansing the palate. Yeah, I that's what want, I found. I do also want to say, not to get on the topic of dental hygiene, but I do want to mention dental hygiene. Uh, if you are a regular cigar smoker and you haven't looked at your tongue in the mirror in a while, you might want to do that because you might be surprised as to what you find. Because you don't often like look at your tongue, right? It's not yep. something you look at every day. But check that out because um, it'll turn brown or even black if you're not. And I find, I don't know, for me, and this is going to sound weird, it does relate to pairings because you want to keep your palate fresh. Also, you want to have good dental hygiene. But more importantly, you want to keep your palate fresh and you want to keep your mouth clean. And it's not clean after you smoke cigars. But anyway, with the tongue, a lot of people try and brush their tongue. Um, I find that doesn't work well enough for me. And I actually have this really awesome tongue scraper that I got at the dentist recently. And I find that works much better. Um, So I highly recommend the tongue scraper. And I tell you what, I I can taste the difference in my cigars um, when I use the tongue scraper. And I find, Will, the reason I thought of that is because, like you said, if you're doing something that is kind of regenerating your palate... You want to wait at least a half an hour or an hour before you smoke. So after I, you know, brush, floss, use mouthwash, and use my tongue scraper, like you got to let your mouth recover from that and wait at least a half an hour, an hour before you start smoking a cigar would be my advice. Yeah, you know, like funny, again, going back to Jose again a little with this, when, when I was in Nicaragua at his first blending seminar, um, before the seminar, he, you know, Jose's one of the biggest proponents of smoking, but he's yelling at everyone, don't smoke, don't smoke. Right. And, and I, I turned to Jose, I said, Jose, you're telling people not to smoke. He goes, 
just until after the seminar, then you can smoke till your, your head falls off, he said. <laughs> and I didn't. I didn't smoke a cigar before I went to uh, the seminar. So, yeah, I didn't either. Yeah. I haven't either and you because you really will get the most out of that. Yeah, yeah, and I was actually able to, to really identify with the flavors. No, I didn't get them right when he asked you what, you know. Well, there's no really right or wrong answer to what flavors, but he does ask you, like, what country of origin the, the tobacco comes from. So yeah, um, you want to be on point when you do that. All right. Well, that's uh, some cigar pairings. Um, big thanks to Jose Blanco for kind of putting that idea in, in our heads uh, and giving us the talking point. So uh, that's our debonair ideal segment for this evening. Uh, so stay tuned. There's lots more to come.